I got to ask to start off, I mean, you've been predicting for the past 30 years this, as you say, this zoonotic shift that was outlined in your Netflix documentary. I mean, are the events of this year in some weird way a vindication of sorts for you? <laughs> no, it's, it's certainly not a vindication. Um, you know, what, what it really is, though, it's indicative of a, a very predictable um, pattern that it's a bit like weather forecasting. Uh, and in many ways, when you think about the emergence of new viral diseases, think of them as the equivalent of the emergence of a hurricane um, somewhere out over the uh, Atlantic. There are very predictable uh, forces that turn a weather front out over the water into a tropical storm and then into a hurricane. And, you know, we've had 50 years of uh, uh, very good data acquisition and modeling by weather uh, services that have allowed us to be much more precise, still a ways to go, but much more precise about forecasting hurricanes. Thinking about emerging viral diseases is not that dissimilar. There are forces, dynamics, pressures um, that in fact propel viruses that currently exist, currently circulate in wildlife to jump into people and then move from people to people. Uh, and the more we uh, understand those forces and we understand where those forces are playing themselves out most dynamically, then we have a much better ability to you know, focus our efforts in those places, among those species and those practices um, that drive relatively unknown innocuous viruses today into headlines tomorrow. So unlike hurricanes, we, we don't really have a chance to prevent hurricanes. We have a chance to use hurricane forecasting to prepare, but better forecasting around the drivers behind emerging diseases really allows us not only to prepare for them to minimize their impact, but they also allow us to prevent them. The spillover, the movement of viruses from animals into people uh, is very much a consequence of us the way we live on this planet, our footprint, how we interact with the ecosystems around us. And if we really understood those actions that uh, put us at risk with better granularity, we have a chance to change them. Personal behavioral um, practices, municipal or industrial level practices, all conspire to make this world a far riskier place today than yesterday. So looking at COVID-19, um, emergence and spread in the pandemic, it's not a vindication uh, in any way, but it is reflective of what we know that COVID-19 is not an accident. It's not a black swan event. It is a direct consequences of we as homo sapiens and how we live on this planet. We can prevent them, but we have to be smart uh, and we have to be uh, diligent. So. 